the new Alfa Romeo bestseller will probably be the all-new Alfa Romeo Tonale. We have two cars here for you today, two different colors and two different trims. This one here is Misano Blue in the Veloce trim. The Veloce trim is the sporty trim. We'll tell you all about it here with Thomas Nautogefühl. For example, that grille is in the matte black style, typical Alfa Romeo form with the famous logo. What a beautiful front grille, isn't it? And also the lower part you can see in a very sporty, darker style. Of course, this is my favorite color. You see it also in my fitting jacket. But here also the headlamps. You can see one, two, three. Beautiful structure. Optional with matrix LED. And we directly also have the TI version for you. This one here in Montreal green. Also a very screaming out color. And you can see here the front grille, same form, but then this chrome style, also the lower lip, more bright, so the TI is the more elegant solution. You can see it also here, whereas the Veloce is definitely the sportier trim, this here as the first impression. The wheels go from 18 to 20 inch, 19 inch for the Veloce, but here you can see these then are the optional 20 inch, the biggest ones available in this typical and very famous Alfa Romeo style with one, two, three, four, five holes. We have them here on both vehicles, but the difference once again, the TI has not only the TI logo here, but also in the lower part, these bright accentuations. Whereas here in the Veloce trim, we have once again the dark accentuation in the lower part, so once again the sportier look. The length, in all cases, is 4 meters 53 or 178 inches, so the smallest Alpha SUV so far. And considering also the price, it's about 16,000 euros or dollars less expensive than the bigger Alpha Stelvio in the midsize segment. This year, a compact SUV. This one will most probably be the most sold Alpha model very, very soon. As for suspension details, you either get the base suspension, which already has hydraulic cushions, and then here the Veloce version comes with the adaptive suspension, which also changes then when you control the driving selector on the interior. By the way, if you wondered, hey, I didn't read Veloce here, usually this would read Veloce here, the badge, but here it says Speciale, because this one is a launch edition of the very early models that are being sold, but this is basically the Veloce trim, it just has a different badge if you order it that early then. The Veloce in the back, you can see what a beautiful light signature and in the lower part, everything then blacked out. Here in the TI, it doesn't look that different, but here in the very low part, once again, there is this bright accentuation that differentiates these two versions. But I mean, look at that. I think design-wise, that's also why people always have bought Alfa Romeo. They just nail it from design. It's beautiful Emozioni Italian design. And here, once again, with a beautiful light signature. And by the way, it also looks really amazing with the turning indicators. And by that, I mean the ones in the front, because you have this cascading style with this three split. This looks really cool. So no matter if turning indicator or hazard lights, everyone will see you. Just in the rear here, yeah, that is then a little bit disappointing. And here, look at that. Even better when I put some light on it. There is the Quadrifoglio logo right in the headlamps. This is kind of like an Easter egg. Will there be a Quadrifoglio version at some point? Hmm, I doubt. Or? It's really hard to see, but just that you know the location. Headlamps, and then it's right here. And another nice detail I really like, like these emotional details, here the Italy flag in the side mirrors. Now let's compare the interiors, Veloce versus TI. Once again, sportiness versus elegance. But first of all, out of the test here with Thomas for the door closing sound, which is actually quite solid. However, inside of the doors, rather hard back in the top part. This one in here is soft, and this one is, of, of course, and more important for your elbows. The Veloce with the red contrast stitches right here. Quality of the materials here is let's say hmm, mediocre but then really cool is first of all look at that sporty steering wheel that looks really nice the buttons here once again quality wise not that great but i'm glad we still have real buttons to press and not hashtag capacitive bs like with so many other manufacturers recently here on the other side for the volume the steering wheel by the way this is the sports steering wheel there are two available like a rather base one and then this the, the sporty one with these inserts and the base steering wheel is all animal free the sports steering wheel here 
mainly just these inserts there are animal source. The rest, leather red, Alpha has taken a good step there. And huge shifting panels here, Maserati inspired, so to speak. Then these beautiful Alcantara seats, they are also completely animal free. Also the side bolsters here from leather red. They are also using less energy and less resources in the production. And a very interesting idea with this kind of perforation in the Alcantara, more breathable, and then with a red background that kind of dissolves to the side. So I love this attention to detail by Alfa Romeo, also with the Alfa stitching here in these head restraints. So these are my favorite seats to go for. I'll soon show you the other ones, the different ones that are available. And let's take a seat actually, how sporty or how comfortable is it? And for me with the one meter 89 or six foot two, Let's see, headroom wise still fits in the lowest position, so also suitable for tall people, although it's their compact SUV. And the seats are indeed, you know, holding you tight, quite sporty, but the Alcantara surface makes it soft enough. So comfort wise, I can already tell you right now, I would prefer these seats here in the Veloce version. Base seats would also come with pure fabric, by the way. They might also be even softer and with a little bit less bolstering. So if you want more comfort, maybe also the base seats uh, fit for you. Maybe you can test them at the dealer or something uh, close by. Uh, we couldn't test them yet here today. Steering wheel with this you know, huge manual lever. Also quality-wise not the best. In and out, up and down. This is actually then a, a good solution. So yeah, easy to control. Let's now compare the other seats in the TI we have. This is by the way the key fob. It's light. Not too premium but also not too bad. And now we have here the TI version for you. And this very vehicle comes with a so-called premium package. These are seats with a mix of animal skin and leatherette with perforation. This one here does not have the standard TI steering wheel, but also the steering wheel from the Veloce, that option actually. And now interesting is, are these more comfortable or in the Veloce? So these here have the same sporty form. The ergonomics are the same, but because in general, slick materials do not adapt to the body that much. Definitely the one with Alcantara are more comfortable. They just, you know, are fitting more to the body overall. In the overview, once again, nice Italian styling. You see an interesting surface actually, feels kind of slick. However, the dashboard here is quite hard once again. Hmm. Screen popped up. This is here 10.25 inch. Digital instruments, 12.3 inch. So more details to that actually. And I really love that here, the lower area, they have real climate controls. So no hashtag capacitive BS, easy to control while driving. This is here the drive mode selector where you can switch these driving modes, go for more dynamic driving mode, for example, more throttle input. And if you have an adaptive suspension, like in the Veloce version, then also the suspension mode would change. In the front part, you have USB-C and USB-A charger and inductive charging underneath. Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, both wireless or with cable. And then we have here the shifting lever. It's like a proper big one, actually. And then we have here this volume jog and another Italy flag. Cup holders are somewhat adaptive with these rubber pads here and then we have this nice covered armrest however the attachment here that is not that good in the build quality digital instruments and they have ooh, really nice animations right there with that as a welcome light and when i light it all up let's see yep so it's all digital left side here i have um, like the like this normal normal speed right side the rpm and then when you switch the driving modes, they also adapt a little bit in the styling. This one here, for example, then the dynamic mode. And what's, by the way, also pretty cool, when I turn off the engine, then you have this goodbye animation. And here in the middle contents, you can switch. And it's also very, you know, like fluid or fluent animation. And here you can also have map then in the middle of the instruments. Infotainment system here, all new Alfa Romeo. And you can see here, for example, you can change also the ambient lighting colors. I'll soon show you that when it's a little bit darker outside. And everything works quite quite quickly. Here, see also the map. This TomTom -tom feature is an option for that GPS, uh, for, the, for that screen here, the GPS. 
And you see here, we are at Lago di Como today, by the way. So Greens are our Italian friends. And it's quite responsive, you know. So really good step forward. And also the Apple CarPlay Android Auto integration looks like this. And this here is also equipped with the optional 14-speaker Harman Kardon system. And we have to say, great sound. Yeah, just like, you know, from a, um, you know, built in the BMWs. Very crystal clear and also good bass, good surround sound. Love that system for music lovers. It's a must. Please tell me, uh, show me the rear cam. Oh, the rear camera. Thank you. Thank you, Thomas. Thomas B. We are Thomas M and Thomas B today. Or Thomas, uh, like the two double, <laughs> double Thomas team. This rear camera here. And then you also have this surround camera right here. And you can also switch different views here. This is in the front camera where we see the Misano Blue one and that interesting truck, or like this with a different angle. And the resolution is actually quite okay. And here the ambient lighting where it's a little bit darker, you can switch red, yellow, white, green. Today, of course, here's the green to our car, or then the Thomas blue, of course, to the Misano blue color. Rear seats here, when I have the driver's seat to my position, it gets close with the knees, but it works for four or maybe five tall adults and you sit relatively high in the rear, that will be good for kids, for example. However, still enough headroom left, so I do easily fit in here. And it's actually a quite, quite cozy seating position here. What about the middle seat here? Can you put the fifth seat here? It's, yeah, because it's not too high, it's actually quite, quite, quite good. So yeah, five tall L's do work. Here in the middle console, we have a USB-A and USB-C charger, so both are available. And then we can also fold down this armrest. We have cup holes, but they are not adaptive. And then directly from here, we can also open that ski hatch to the rear. Rear seats in the Veloce version, also with the beautiful Alcantara colors. And again, with this shining through red architecture or color architecture. So that looks really fancy also for the rear passengers. And it's not this really single seat setup. You see the middle area is also somewhat flat. <laughs> By the way, when English native speakers hear the name Tonale for the very first time, they say, oh, that's a new Alpha Toenail. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one, right? But however, the name originally derives from the Passo del Tonale. That's a mountain pass in northern Italy with really great scenery roads, winding corners. And yeah, that's why Alfa wanted to have the connection to this name. Hatch here for the trunk. Let's take a look. The length is not that convincing. It's 80 centimeters or 31 inches. And also the width, this is rather just, you know, it's about 90 centimeters, you know, about 90 centimeters. Um, that's about 35 inches. Usually trunks in this segment should be a meter or 40 inches. So, but that's the thing where the great design with the nice hip area just has a toll on the interior space. However, the height of all is actually, you know, quite okay. Here, 40 centimeters or 16 inches under the cover. However, you can lift this one up and then you can have a deeper trunk like this. You have the tire repair kit in here. It also would house a replacement tire, that's that's for sure. And then you have, if you want, even more height available. And when we fold the bench, we reach around 160 centimeters or 61 inches. Capacity, by the way, 500 up to 1,550 liters. And the closing of the hatch here, this would be a EU, EU press, like a European pr uh, pressing the button. And the more American regulation is that you hold it a little bit longer or press it a little bit longer. And they did it because they have one software version for the vehicle, both for the US and for the EU market. And that's why we as Europeans are a little bit irritated if it doesn't close with one short click because, you know, the US regulation for that is a little bit different. And now Alfa Romeo fans, all the Alfisti, how do you call them, have to be very strong because there's a front wheel driven diesel for an Alfa Romeo. <laughs> 1.6 liter. Yeah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> or am I? But this one is not a diesel. This one here is the 1.5 liter turbo petrol engine. 130 or 160 horsepower. It's also front wheel drive. And interesting is that it's not exactly mild hybrid, but also not like a big hybrid. It's something in between. So it's not hybrid in the sense of like Toyota's offering, but it's also more than just a mild hybrid. So you can have indeed moments where you drive all electric with this electrified, so to speak, 
turbo petrol engine. So very interesting. We will drive the 160 horsepower version today. In the US market, there will also be a two liter petrol engine, turbo petrol engine available. They are all four cylinders. And the most powerful one will be the hybrid. That one, the 1.3 liter of displacement, but with electric motor on the rear axle, the only then that has all-wheel drive because the electric rear axle then is the rear axle is powered by the electric motor, and you can also drive that one then rear-wheel drive only if you drive all electric. 6.2 seconds then the quickest engine actually. But today, testing the 1.5, it's very interesting. I talked to the engineer yesterday, and they're running a Miller cycle here for more efficiency, and at the same time they have a, a variable turbo geometry so that actually has the effect that the maximum torque already begins at 1500 rpm goes to 3000 rpm and then even then the curve the power curve is not really falling quickly so let's see how that one turns out alpha toenail uh, tonale <laughs> driving part wow look at that that's the reason why people buy alfa romeo you see here the, the, the mirroring in that window when we pass it here with the vehicle. Wow, that looks just amazing. And this is that emozioni that the Italian designers have thought of actually. And this actually brings joy to your life. And then let's take a stroll with the updated engine. And it's very interesting. This does share the platform with the Jeep Compass. But the big question is, does it also drive like a Jeep Compass or does it drive completely different? First of all, they have these hydraulic cushions here in that base suspension we are driving. So at this moment, we're not driving the adaptive suspension. So we will be going for the TI version. This is the TI version with the 1.5 liter Ma hybrid engine. Thomas, you should check out that your glasses don't fly all over the place. Yes. Thank you so much. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Yeah, sometimes you have to um, send your cameraman to no, uh, non-creating noise school while driving reviews. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but back to our review. This one in here with that new engine, the thing is really, it is between mild hybrid and a uh, bigger hybrid, like we know from Toyota. So when we, for example, lift our foot off the throttle, in this case, RPMs are still there, but it can also sometimes happen that we have electric driving moments. There are also some gauges in the middle part here, which actually then uh, tell us what is going on. So not sure if you really want to always pay attention to that while driving, but in this case, then we, we do it here for you. For example, here they're now charging. So when you, when you hit the brakes, you are recuperating, have the recharging, and then power of course, then also comes a little bit from that battery, always serving as a buffer. So very interesting technology and they have trimmed this engine, at least they try to like both for power and efficiency. This is always like, a, it's, you know, it's, it's like, like a conflict in the, in the goal you want to reach. So we'll see later on with the conjunction how that one plays out. So far here in city traffic, it's actually quite silent. And this car is also, uh, you know, thought out that it does handle city traffic because it's just smaller than the stale view, you save money, and so more and more people, at least you know, want to buy Alfa Romeo, will go here for the Tonala. So it's super important indeed how it drives. I said earlier that the Alcantara seats are a little bit more comfortable, just from the, from the seat surface, I can already confirm that. Overview here in the city is actually quite decent. So you have this strong design focus of the vehicle, yes, However, you still have a decent overview to the rear. Maybe the, you know, the middle head restraint is blocking it a little bit, but also the sides is actually quite okay. And then you also have the blind spot monitor, which will show a, like, like a small yellow triangle. I have it on the right side here at the moment, which you can't see because it's a narrow, typical Italian traffic situation. And I really have to say that you feel more yeah, just more comfortable, more, more at ease than you would be here in the bigger Stelvio, for example. We have some bumpy roads here in the city, which is in this case a good thing. Not a good thing for people living here, right? But the thing is that we have the 20 inch wheels mounted and then not the adaptive suspension. And we have to say it is kind of rough. So not the best idea 
if you stick with the base suspension, also pick smaller wheels to get, to get more comfort. And 18 and at least 19 inch, it will still look very good. The 20 inch, of course, has a great Alfa Romeo design, but they just bring more stiffness to the ride. So I think this is a too rough combination, especially for the purpose of the vehicle. So we continue. You feel that, you know, you have some assist by the, uh, by the electric moment, so to speak, but it's not that it would feel like a true hybrid or so, you know, it more feels like a petrol engine, more drives like a mild hybrid for sure. The interesting thing is really that the maximum torque already begins at 1500 RPM, as I talked to the, to the engineer yesterday evening, and this is something they specially tuned here for the Alfa Tonale in comparison also to the Jeep Compass. So that was the warning of the autonomous emergency brake. These guys in the, in the Alpha department, they must, must, they must have been sitting there and they're like, they're like, come on, let's do something so funny, which is good for safety, but also for fun. And they must have sit, uh, sit, sit there and laughed their dude off <laughs> creating that horn. You know, we, yeah, that's like the... <laughs> It's like an Italian Piaggio horn or something, you know? <laughs> but it's so funny that we could experience that here uh, in the most authentic uh, way in, in live Italian city traffic. Wow. But do you hear the turning indicator? And now I make an also Italian turn here. What the? I mean, did they forget the turning indicator sound? It sounds maybe like if some, someone is like, I don't know, having like a wooden stick in this clunking, like in the, in the, in the inside of a, of a small glass or something. Is... Okay, that's pretty weird. However, how versatile the car is. That's good, easy steering. At the same time, it does feel actually quite natural. And it also differs from the driving mode. For example, I'm in a normal neutral driving mode. In the dynamic driving mode, you have a little bit more resistance then. You have also more throttle input and the engine is also a little bit more responsive. But now we already experience the advantages of this vehicle. It's just smaller, it's narrow, it's a compact SUV and therefore very suitable here to the city traffic. And I all of you here, as soon as we go a little bit in the corners, left and right, squeeze somewhere in there, it already transports this driving fun. Wait a minute, the turning indicator sound is not like strange. But I can actually imitate the turning indicator sound with the lumbar support. <laughs> Do you hear that? And let's now see how much power this engine has from 30 kilometers an hour. Let's go. 60. 90. 80 was, yeah. Whoa. Interesting. And when I hit the brake a little bit harder, automatically goes for the hazard lights there. That's powerful. And I mean, it wasn't too loud, but that was a pretty quick acceleration indeed. So um, yeah, the performance from the engine is really neat. By the way, I do prefer the dynamic mode, especially from the steering, um, because in a normal mode, it's just too light actually, you know? So um, feels like moving through thin air. It does definitely have a sporty setup and yeah, it does drive very differently to the Jeep Compass indeed. You do feel platform, that was probably because the sensors were thinking I hit the wall on the right side. So um, you do feel platform resemblance, Jeep Compass and also to the Fiat models. Um, but this one here definitely with the sporty setup here with the you know more torque intensive engine does deliver you a unique driving feeling. The Stelvio, however, with that rear-wheel driven platform, which is shared with the Julia, however, feels more Alfisti, you know, or for Alfistis. Here, by the way, you can see very well now, once again, the ambient lighting. And we can also switch it through here once again. Yeah, that looks cool, right? Green, white, yellow, and red. Ooh, yeah, that fits to the racing driving mode. Green, of course, and to this very TI vehicle. So this is a very nice emotional feature, love that. 
And yeah, I'm really uh, surprised how you know performance oriented that engine is, although it has this small displacement. So, you know, there's no replacement for displacement that still counts. And I'm still very certain that when there would be no special like the EU regulations, engineers would not pick engines with that small displacement. They would, wouldn't just do that. Not for performance and also not for efficiency. Beautiful views here and also beautiful roads here at the Lago di Como, the, or Lake Como here in northern Italy. Very, very nice piece. And let's see if we can uh, check out um, you know, where George Clooney has his house here. And maybe have a coffee uh, with him and produce some more uh, toxic aluminum waste. <laughs> Sorry, social criticism also included in this car review. <laughs> so, let's focus on the driving again. In front of us, uh, Fiat Punto. It's also a very typical car here, of course. And these riding roads here are a really lot of fun. This is a nice traffic sign. You know that traffic sign? Italian viewers know it. Like the anti-horn sign. So this sign says, like, do not use your horn. Because here, quite often, the horn is being used to communicate. That's also why earlier the um, emergency braking assist had this, you know, typical horn included there. And I'm really happy I picked these roads because that is where this vehicle is shining. It is smaller, it is more compact, it is lighter and it's really a lot of fun, especially than in tight roads. And when there may be, when there may be like some oncoming traffic like here, and I would be in the stealth view now. I would be like, oh, is that fitting? Is that fitting? Maybe I have to have to fall in the, the mirrors. And here it's still more or less relaxed. Interesting with this mild hybrid 2 hybrid system here, by the way, when you're really at zero now, still electric. Electric, electric, electric. 10 kilometers an hour, 12, 13, still electric, still electric, no RPM. It's really now there the RPM set in. And that's again. This would not happen with a mild hybrid and with a like Toyota style hybrid, we would have more electric moments. So very interesting that they actually picked something in between. And this will be a big thing at Alfa Romeo. So in 2027, they will go fully electric. Wait a minute. Not as in all new cars are electric then. No, they will only sell electric vehicles, also from the existing one, basically, in beginning 2027. That means this one will probably be the most sold Alpha very soon. And this will only be sold about five years, and then it's kind of like cancelled? That's a strange decision, isn't it? However, what is interesting is that Alpha has the fastest transition of any car manufacturers from having zero electric vehicles to fully electric. No one does it in this short period of time. That is definitely, you know, they were very late to the party, but then they want to be early in having it very consistently. That's also the reason why this all new model has so much electrification, you know, here then going beyond mild hybrid, then the plug-in hybrid model as well, which will then feature this electrically driven rear axle. Uh, we will drive that, for example, at the later stage for you. This one here will be, however, probably the most relevant engine. Plug-in hybrid will, of course, be more expensive, and the subsidiaries in a lot of countries are running out for, uh, for PHEVs. And, of course, also the US engine, the 2-liter Toro Petro engine, that one will also be a very, very crucial one. But I have to say, sporty setup with 20-inch wheels, to me, a little bit too uncomfortable. Maybe that's better than with the adaptive suspension. Steering wheel, a little bit too light. However, likable driving feeling, definitely a lot of fun. Yes, it does deliver that driving fun. Comfort for tall guys could be a little bit better. There, it's definitely better in the stealth view, but you have these advantages of the compact dimensions. And when you have a lot of city traffic share, then it will actually be better. Well, but now what again? If we pick another vehicle with the adaptive suspension, how differently will this one actually drive? And now we have moved to the adaptive suspension in the Veloce version. We are driving the very same engine here. It's just that we now have 
that adapter suspension in the Veloce. We have the very same wheels, actually. This is then also very good to compare these. So what difference does it make? Well, first of all, when you're driving just around town and so on, switching with a little bit of lanes, and there's even ground, you hardly feel any difference. And also these 20 inch wheels, they make the ride indeed very stiff. So my first tip would really be to stick with smaller wheels if you seek more comfort. And again, this car is making the ride somewhat rough indeed with the 20 inch wheels. So with the adaptive suspension, the difference is not super large that you would immediately say like, wow, this feels completely different also. Mm, it is a small notable difference. However, the main difference is actually that you can make it even stiffer. This one here is actually the normal driving mode. And then we have this additional button here in the middle console inside the driving mode selector. And you can switch it to then the dynamic driving mode, to the D, and then the suspension gets even stiffer. Hmm. But then you can also say like, hey, I want the dynamic driving mode. I want like the increased throttle input, a little bit more feedback from the steering wheel, but I want the rather soft suspension. And then you can press the suspension button inside and then again you have the dynamic mode but with the normal yeah I would say the normal soft suspension if it would be soft but it kind of isn't you know so um, yeah that's the thing um, so the question is then should you invest the money and go for the adaptive suspension I think that's not the real crucial point I think rather save money and get smaller wheels that's the more crucial point however it makes somewhat sense to go for the Veloce version to get here get the nice Alcantara seats for example that is cool and also of course when you want the sportier styling of the Veloce because that's definitely very beautiful another alternative would of course be to stick with the base version go smaller wheels take the base base, base suspension but then again 18, wheel, 18 inch wheels maybe the 19 inch and have better riding comfort. Maybe also go for the entry-level fabric seats and then you can keep somewhat the price low because otherwise here in the, in, in the versions we present, present to you, usually the price is a little bit higher and so on. So, and I always tend to say like, you don't have to tick all the different boxes. So I would have expected a little bit more from that adaptive suspension, but as I said, not the largest difference. This will not be the crucial factor when picking this vehicle. But I hope you really enjoy that we show you these differences then in our driving reviews. Have you seen the review of the bigger brother of the Alpha Stelvio? And what about the competitor, the Audi Q3?